General of the United States from 1995 to 1997 under Bill Clinton. And uh, once again, it's, uh, it's great to have you with us. Um, I, I was talking a few moments ago about some of the changes you've seen in your life, and I asked you if you thought that we were on the verge of becoming a colorblind society, and you said, well, not in your lifetime. You don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. However, I, you know, I, I noticed that over the last, I, I would say, maybe 15 or 20 years, uh, we have seen uh, more interracial marriages than I remember seeing at all when I was growing up as a kid in the 50s. And so, I mean, I think you've had a greater sense of acceptance of people on both sides, uh, specifically black and white, because I think that, you know, I remember seeing uh, blacks and Hispanics marry blacks, I mean, whites and Hispanics marry and, and, and whites and Asians marry, but the, the numbers of whites and blacks marrying the last 20 years, I think has cre is, is, is definitely increased substantially. And, uh, you know, I, I think we are heading toward a, a place where eventually if we can get away from a lot of the rhetoric that's used by people like Sharpton and, and Jesse Jackson, hopefully we'll be able to get to a point where people will start seeing each other truly as people instead of uh, based upon the color of skin. Well, my personal observation probably is similar to yours. I notice those things too, that there seems to be more uh, interracial marriages, relationships, uh, and certainly one would expect that following the civil rights actions and the civil rights legislation that was passed in the 60s. But I want to relate what you just said to the story for black colleges again. Sure. Because um, that is a question that comes up. And it is an issue that young people have to deal with. Uh, do I go to quotes a historic black college. Am I going to get as good an education as I will at the state university or a large predominant white university? And uh, it's an issue they should have to deal with. And I'm here this morning to be a witness, so to speak, for uh, the excellence of historic black colleges since my entire career and education and training were in historic black institutions. Uh, and just a little note, uh, after I left Meharry, I went on to do my internship and residency training at Cook County Hospital in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that was turning a new page. While I was there, I was named chief resident. That was, at that time, unheard of. First of all, it was unheard of almost when I got to Meharry, because that time, women were not generally going into medicine. Now, there was no room in the dormitory for women. There was a dormitory for men. So I witnessed those changes. But being made chief resident at Cook County Hospital in 1960, 1961, this is before the Civil Rights Movement, right. changed the course of my life and my professional pursuits. I learned how to deal with the mayor's office, Mayor Bailey himself for example. So my perspective of medicine and what was possible grew and broadened beyond just private practice. And um, so I never had any qualms about the quality of the education that I had received from Spelman and from Meharry. Young people today, especially young African Americans, youth in urban areas, in rural areas, who have not had the exposure, very often will be faced with this decision. Do I go to a historically black institution? Are there any advantages? Are there disadvantages? And depending on where they are, they're going to get different kinds of reactions. I heard students say that their counselors say, oh, don't go to a black school you're going to leave. They're not as good at it. Uh, that's definitely more isolated. You're not as in a as much of a, um, a, a, a of a, a inst institution where it brings in people from different backgrounds. Well, I I see the institutions in a different perspective. First of all, there's value for education in a historically black college. The uh, scope of African American history, of black history, is different. 
they expose you to African Americans and um, black artists, poets, philosophers, musicians. It's different. Uh, the exposure that you receive about history, and African American history in particular, is different. And one has to decide how valuable those experiences are versus another kind of experience. But they should not feel that the education will be inferior because it's a black institution. I certainly don't feel that way. And I don't think the statistics uh, support the concept that one would get an inferior education. I, I guess we uh, might someday look to the uh, time when uh, historical black colleges are not necessary, where people can go to institutions as people and be able to be taught and educated as people, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, sex, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you're saying that's not the case right now. Well, I think that we are on the verge of being there. Uh, there are two kinds of historical black colleges. There are the private institutions, like a Spelman and a Morehouse in Atlanta, or a Talladega in Alabama, uh, Tougaloo in Mississippi, Tuskegee. Then there are the public historically black institutions, which were started much later, that are supported by the state, Savannah State, Albany State. These schools are still historically black institutions, but they are public. Let me ask you this, we've got very little time. In your lifetime, has it been harder to overcome obstacles as a woman or as a black person? That's a good question. I would say in the field that I'm in, in medicine, in public health, the barriers that I have felt or have experienced have been more because I'm a woman than has been because I'm black. And I've never felt that kind of discrimination against me personally as a black person, but certainly some resentment and hostility, perhaps because a woman's doing the job. And certainly once you're in the service, I retired as a two-star rear admiral. So I have been through the chains of command and promotions of what it, become, what it requires to become a ranking officer. So you can imagine what some of those experiences might have been. Absolutely. Alan, I want to thank you before we go too much farther for the opportunity to speak with you this morning and to share my personal experience and to discuss some of the issues and questions that you have in your mind. It has been my uh, pleasure having you here, Dr. Audrey Manley, uh, Acting Surgeon General of the United States from 1995 to 1997. If you want to find out more about uh, this uh, gathering of the United College Action Network and the uh, Historical Black Colleges and Universities, it will be on the uh, 16th, uh, Sunday the 16th through Wednesday the 19th. Uh, you can go to lasvegasblackimage.com, lasvegasblackimage.com, and get more information, lasvegasblackimage.com and you can get information about exactly where it's going to be and much more information on it. Dr. Manley, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciated it, too. Dr. Audrey Manley joining us right here on I in Vegas and Vegas TV and on Newstalk 720 KBWN. I'm Alan Stock.